What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I want to say thank you to all of you for leaving so many kind and supportive comments on last week's video. Um, it was really awesome being able to sit in the comment section with you guys and a lot of you actually knew Kevin Bacon in person, um, which was very interesting to hear different stories from you guys about who Kevin was as a person and your experiences with him. Um, also, I am so excited that you guys love my jungle background as much as I do, so do not worry. It's not going to go anywhere when I move into my permanent filming setup. So today's video is about the murder of a 43-year-old woman named Christine Holloway and her two-year-old daughter that is missing, Vanessa Morales. And Vanessa actually doesn't turn two until September 7th, so a few days after I post this video. And I've been looking a lot more recently into more recent cases. And I know I cover usually a lot of cold cases, cases from a while ago. Um, but I really wanted to try to bring in a lot more current cases on my channel and this is one that was in my suggestions. This happened back in December of 2019 so it hasn't even been a full year yet and again because Vanessa's birthday is going to be in a couple of days and she's still missing, she will be turning two, I really wanted to shed light on her disappearance around that time so that people can be more aware and be on the lookout for her and there's a huge chance that Vanessa is with someone and if there's maybe a birthday party that's going to be thrown for her you know something going on I just feel like it's a great time to really bring more awareness to this case but before I get into that I need to say a thank you to hunt a killer for sponsoring today's video hunt a killer is a murder mystery subscription box that comes straight to your door monthly and it is hands down one of the most unique games I've ever played I love all kinds of games video games board games card games I will sit down and do a crossword puzzle for hours my family actually has a weekly game night so a true crime game was the perfect addition to my collection. Hunt a Killer consists of seasons and each season consists of six episodes or six separate boxes that are mailed to you monthly revolving around one specific crime. This season the remains of a famous actor from the 1930s were found by Julie Adler and her family's theater and it was initially believed that this young actress just went missing or ran away. They quickly realized that this was actually a homicide. Now each box that you get contains piles of documents and evidence, audio recordings, there's so many fascinating little pieces of like real evidence, like things you would actually see in evidence bags, and you get to examine all of this, you get to eliminate suspects, identify murder weapons, and each new box that you get every month adds more information which just builds the story and the complexity. Haunted Killer is perfect for a family game night or a monthly game night with your friends or a date night in. And you you can even feel great about purchasing a subscription because proceeds from each box go to one of my favorite places to support, which is the Cold Case Foundation. Right now, just for my subscribers, you can go to huntakiller.com forward slash Danielle Hallen and use code Hallen for a 20% off discount on your first box. It supports me, it supports the Cold Case Foundation, and you're having a lot of fun in the process. Thank you again to Hunt Killer for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get into the details of the case. Now, unfortunately, there's really not a whole lot of information out there, partly because this case is so recent and ongoing, and also because there is a court case happening currently, and the investigation is ongoing, so a lot of information's kind of been kept quiet. So when it comes to who Christine was as a person and a lot of her, you know, just different details I typically would be able to give in a video, I just don't have those. So I will give you the basics of what I do know and what I picked up just from reading about the search circumstances. Christine was 43 years old and she was an outstanding mother to almost two-year-old Vanessa Morales. She lived on Myrtle Avenue with her daughter in Ansonia, Connecticut, and she was a very responsible and loved employee at Bright Morning Star Daycare. And at the time of her death, she was dating a man named Jose Morales, and Jose is Vanessa's father. Christine and Vanessa were last seen by her family on Thanksgiving Day 2019. And as the weekend passed and Monday morning came, something was going on. So that Monday morning, Christine was supposed to show up for her shift at the daycare and she did not. And as I said, she was a very reliable, responsible employee. And I'm not sure if it was just off of that alone. Maybe Christine 
uh, disclose some sort of personal information to co-workers, but right off the bat they knew this was out of character and they were worried enough to go ahead and call police to do a welfare check on Christine. So at around, I think a little afternoon, right before one o'clock, authorities showed up to Myrtle Avenue and they were going to make sure Christine was okay because she was no call, no show, and this was unlike her. When they arrived, there had been a fresh snow that morning, so they could tell there were no footprints at all leading to or from the door, so no one had been out of the house so far that day. They went and they knocked. The officer didn't hear anything. Nobody answered the door, so they assumed Christine was just out somewhere, so they went ahead and left. Now, a couple of hours later, her family also started to zone in on the fact that something wasn't quite right because from what I'm seeing, she kept in pretty constant communication with her family, her coworkers, her friends, and when they couldn't get in touch with her at all since Thanksgiving, they figured that something was likely wrong. So they also called authorities and authorities were sent back out to Myrtle Avenue at around 7 p.m. that Monday night. And this was December 2nd was the date. It was the following Monday after Thanksgiving. When authorities got there, they had a plan this time of actually getting inside of the house because at this point her work is called, her family is called, and they're stating, you know, she, it's not just her, it's also a one-year-old little girl and we need to make sure that they're okay. So authorities were planning on getting inside the house. And when they got there, they knew right off the bat that something really bad had happened. There was blood on the rug in Christine's home. They saw blood on the walls. There were kitchen towels that were coated in blood. And then eventually they ended up finding Christine dead in her bathtub. And there was absolutely no sign of Vanessa anywhere. So now not only are authorities facing the fact that Christine is dead in the bathtub from unknown circumstances, but her one-year-old daughter that can't just leave on her own and needs the care of an adult is missing as well. Authorities hit the ground running and by the early morning hours of that Tuesday, which was December the 3rd, they had issued a silver alert and they were combing through the crime scene at Christine's house. They noticed pretty quickly that a number of items that were needed to take care of Vanessa were missing. Things like a Graco car seat, there was a gray Eddie Bauer diaper bag, there was also her favorite teething rings and her blanket that she always used. All of these items were missing. So authorities were starting to wonder, you know, if this was maybe a more personal attack because a random killer isn't going to come in, kill a 43 year old woman, and then go to the extent of collecting her child, cleaning up the crime scene, gathering a car seat, diaper bag, all these things to take care of this child. It seemed like either Christine was targeted or this was someone that was close to her. So the first person they wanted to see was Jose Morales. So they got a warrant to search his home. Now, Jose and Christine did not live together. They were just dating and I'm not exactly sure what their relationship was like. There's not a lot of information out there about this. And again, it's an ongoing investigation. So a ton of information is being withheld from the public to protect the case. But again, the one thing authorities did know is this seemed very personal. And since Jose was not living in the home and statistics kind of back the idea that a lot of children are taken by their parents or family members, they figured this was a great way to start. And I actually looked up the most recent statistics on child abductions when it comes to family members. And I've seen that 12 in 1,000 children are abducted by family members. 90% of those are taken by another parent. When they arrived to Jose's house, Vanessa was nowhere to be found. There was absolutely no sign that she had been there recently. Um, but one thing they did find were two tasers. And Jose is a convicted felon and it is illegal for him to possess tasers. So he ended up being arrested. And even though he was arrested for something entirely separate to the investigation into Christine's death and Vanessa's disappearance, it brought up Jose's past and what exactly he was convicted for and boy, it tells a story. So in 2012, Jose was arrested, I believe two separate times. He was dating a young woman and this young woman's mom one day frantically called 911. She said, look, 
My daughter is dating this guy. They both showed up at my house at around 1.30 in the morning and he was clearly high on PCP and they went upstairs and he was acting erratically. And she said after a few minutes of being upstairs, she heard a giant thump. So she ran up there to check on everyone and she walked in to Jose pinning her daughter on the ground saying that he was going to break all of her bones. So she obviously calls 911 freaking out and as soon as they arrive, they find Jose absolutely high on PCP naked laying on the bed and both him and his girlfriend denied that anything happened that night. They did both admit they were high on PCP um, and you know while she didn't want to file any charges for that night, his girlfriend actually admitted that she already had a protective order against him from the last time that they fought because they were both high on PCP. So he legally wasn't even allowed to be anywhere near her and that was grounds enough for authorities to arrest him for violating this protective order. I believe he got some time for this and then they took it away and just did a certain amount of time on probation and it only took two months of being in probation for him to have another incident. And this time, the incident was actually caught by the police. So, Jose was seen on the side of the street by a police officer. A police officer was watching this altercation happen. And Jose was with a woman that had her baby in a stroller. And out of nowhere, it became clear there was some sort of altercation, um, a violent one. He grabbed her by the arm and, you know, was dragging her. She was desperately trying to get away from him. And by the time authorities intervened, she had managed to wiggle free of him and just took off running, screaming. And of course, they find out it's Jose, that he's on probation. And the woman that he had just attacked was the same girlfriend from last time and the same girlfriend from the initial protective order. So basically this is painting a picture that he had a tendency to be violent towards women. So either it's a huge coincidence that his new girlfriend is found dead in her bathtub or he's definitely involved in it. By the following day, Wednesday, December the 4th, authorities decided to hold a press conference where they said that Christine's death was being investigated as a homicide. And they also told the public that the silver alert had been upgraded to an amber alert for Vanessa, that she had in fact more than likely been abducted. They also stated that Jose had been arrested for unrelated reasons, but they did state that they were questioning him in the disappearance of his daughter and the death of his girlfriend. And they said he was being very cooperative. He was answering all the questions and that at this point in time, he was not a suspect. Friends, family, and the community all came together to search for Vanessa. They were handing out flyers on corners, to people in cars. I've even seen a video where flyers, a handful of them were handed to a delivery driver and the delivery driver was going to hand them out as he made his deliveries. There were Facebook groups that were started. Um, you know, multiple pleas were made through the media. They were trying to encourage whoever had Vanessa to come forward and drop her off anywhere. There were lots of families that were putting in red light bulbs on their front porch and that was supposed to be a place where Vanessa could be dropped off. Authorities were kind of encouraging people to not necessarily do that and instead use the safe haven law, which allows you to drop a child off at a hospital. And there's no punishment for abandonment or anything when you do that. There was just such a huge possibility because all of her items had been taken with her that she was in the hands of someone, not necessarily safe, but she was at least possibly alive and okay. And they needed to know who had her and were trying to encourage them to just bring her back home. Authorities knew that in order to find Vanessa, they needed to find out exactly what happened to Christine and who killed her. The autopsy report showed that Christine was killed through blunt force trauma and then put into the bathtub and she fought hard for her life. She fought her attacker because she had hair in her hands and that is such a huge deal because that is indicative that she was defending herself and she more than likely ripped that hair out of her attacker's head, arms, anywhere she could have grabbed it. So authorities sent the hair off to have DNA testing done in a forensics lab and they went back to Christine's home to continue their investigation. There were numerous boxes and bags being seen carried out of the home by police officers. There was also a car out front of the home. I'm unsure who the car belonged to, uh, but there were also searches happening within the vehicle and things being taken out of the vehicle. Authorities even went door to door to the different neighboring homes and asked if they had seen or heard anything. They even sent out a plea to the public again asking 
And for anyone with security footage, the ring doorbells or, you know, anything like that that may have captured anyone driving to or from and the area may have captured a car seat with a child in it at a strange time. Um, they were doing whatever they could to gather information about Vanessa. They interviewed both sides of Vanessa's family to see if anyone was hiding anything or maybe could have been hiding Vanessa herself, but they continued to come up empty handed. All of Vanessa's family on Christine's side and Jose's side were so cooperative. They were handing over photos that they had, giving police any information that they needed. They were, you know, meeting with the media whenever they needed to. They were exhausting all options and ways of helping. On December the 5th, news about Vanessa and Christine at this point had spread like wildfire and authorities received a tip from an employee in Hamden at the Kiducation Donation Center. Apparently something of interest was found in one of their donation bins. And from what I'm seeing, authorities went to search one of these locations that might have been like a hub, like an actual building in um, Derby, which is nearby. It was actually very nearby to where all of this happened. And this place in Hamden, I believe, was just the donation boxes, like the ones that you see in parking lots where you can just like walk up to it, open it up, throw in like the shoes and the clothes and book bags and things like that. Um, so it was a very convenient place if someone had wanted to dump all these items that were missing um, from the home that belonged to Vanessa without anyone necessarily catching them. And authorities were really worried that's exactly what they were going to find. So they sent out police to the Derby location, the place in Hamden. I mean, there were numerous bins that were searched, numerous different locations. And from what I have seen, I don't think anything came from this information because as of the most recent articles, all of the items that I listed before, the blanket, the diaper bag, the car seat, the teething rings, all of them still have not been found. And then by December 17th, authorities finally came forward with an update. Jose Brent, Morales. we're live here on Myrtle Avenue, right behind us here, the home where Christine Holloway was found dead a week ago, Monday night, some 11 days ago. And yes, indeed, it was her boyfriend and the father of their one-year-old who is now a suspect in that murder investigation. 43-year-old Jose Morales, who was arrested by New Haven police last week on unrelated illegal weapons charges, is the suspect in Holloway's murder. According to law enforcement sources, that has spoken with Fox 61 this afternoon. And Sonia police said they would have no comment on or updates on their investigation into the murder of the Amber Alert involving Holloway and Morales' daughter, one-year-old Vanessa Morales. But residents from the neighborhood aren't quite comfortable with that yet. Maybe once they finally say that he's the one, then might feel a little safer, but with the woods up here and everything, you know, you never know. Jose Morales had been labeled a suspect in not only Christine's murder, but his own daughter's disappearance. He was still in jail on these weapons charges, so it wasn't like he could go out and harm anyone else. So authorities figured they wanted to build the best case that they could against him before formally charging him and then prosecuting him. Shortly after this, another tip was called in about a local BJ's nearby in Derby where someone found a Graco car seat that looked like it had just been kind of thrown out beside the building. This was a big deal because this area was I think only around a mile away from where just that same exact week, authorities had brought dogs to search a wooded area looking for Vanessa. So this is all like in a very close vicinity. But unfortunately as well, I do not believe this ended up being the car seat, but I just wanted to still give you guys these different tips that came in because people were reporting everything. People were really keeping their eyes peeled. I've seen so many interviews with people stating that their whole entire life has changed since then. They check every dumpster that they walk by, every trash can. They look in every car that appears to be abandoned to see if there's maybe a car seat that matches or her diaper bag. People are checking in parking lots behind big buildings. The whole community is going above and beyond to keep an eye out for any of these items and anything that could lead authorities to Vanessa. And then finally, authorities caught the huge break that they were waiting for. The DNA testing came back and you guys, the hairs in Christine's hand matched her hairs as well as Jose Morales. This in itself was a huge deal. This means that she was fighting with Jose directly prior to her death. That was on her hands 
as she died. And on top of that, when authorities were waiting for the DNA test results to come back, they were executing other searches and they ended up finding a bag with what appeared to be bloodstains on it. I have not seen the results from that. The bag was actually found in Jose's car and there were also some bloody clothes that were found and police have not disclosed the location these were found in, who the blood may belong to. So authorities at this point felt that they had enough. Jose was arrested and charged with the murder of Christine Holloway as well as tampering with evidence and he was arraigned on those charges on February 7th, 2019. Jose's bond was set at $5 million and he was being represented by a man named Norm Pattis who had most recently defended a man that was charged for murdering his wife and I believe either right as the trial started or right before he ended up ending his own life. The media had a field day with this information because they felt like his choice of representation was very telling. And apparently it was like an emergency call to Norm Pattis the night before the arraignment. Pattis attempted to get his bond down to 2 million instead of 5 million, but the judge denied his request. Jose was unable to get out on bond, so he has been detained this entire time and he most recently appeared in court only on July 22nd, so around a month ago. And um, he ended up entering his plea of not guilty and he was represented by a different attorney this time named Kevin Smith. Um, but from what it looks like, I believe Kevin Smith may work with Norm Pattis. I could be way off on that, but I could have sworn I saw them in a video together as if they were kind of like a team. Now I'm unsure exactly when his trial is set to begin, but I'll make sure to update you guys on that. I know I am following along with it, but while there may be hopefully justice for Christine and her murder, Vanessa is still missing and Jose is officially the prime suspect in the disappearance of Vanessa Morales, his own daughter, and he is not saying a thing. He's not telling anyone anything. He wouldn't even enter his own plea when he was most recently in court. He had his attorney do it for him. He is just totally tight-lipped, not giving anything away. You guys, I can't even read his facial expressions in the different videos I've seen of him in court. It's the most eerie thing. Authorities have said there is nothing at all that leads them to believe that Vanessa is no longer alive. So when it comes to the bloody clothing that kind of have been breezed over by authorities, that makes me feel better because that tells me that bloody clothing at least is not anything that belonged to uh, Vanessa. So there is a huge chance that she is out there alive somewhere uh, being taken care of by someone. They have ruled out family as far as I know. So Vanessa is not with Jose's family. Vanessa is not with Christine's family anywhere. Um, and both Jose's family and Christine's family have been very forthcoming and honest. I am happy that it's turned out this way because when I initially started researching into this case, it is a recipe that typically ends in two families going against each other. Um, but they all seem to have the exact same goal from what I'm understanding and seeing. However, I'm not personally there, so take that with a grain of salt. But it seems they are both working towards finding Vanessa um, and finding the truth. In my opinion, if someone does in fact have Vanessa right now, it is someone that was very close to Jose. And I I'm starting to wonder if there is any possibility at all that he was dating someone else, seeing some other woman, and that is who he may have handed his daughter over to. Um, you know, I've watched some interviews with his family. They seem very honest as well when it comes to knowing nothing about her location. Authorities also agree with that. So I really think it's this random third party that he was close with, possibly another female or maybe a good friend of his. If they are close to him then they know there is an ongoing search. And I don't know if he's maybe threatened someone into staying quiet or if there's something else possibly going on. It's really heartbreaking to know that Vanessa could be out there somewhere right now. And so many people already lost Christine. Jose's family, I don't know how close they were with Christine, but Christine's family is absolutely devastated. They have been taken from her and they didn't just lose her, but now her two-year-old daughter, no one has any clue. Is she alive? Is she not alive? Is she okay? Is she safe? Is she being taken care of? Is she not being taken care of? That is a lot to cope with and question on a daily basis. So I really, really hope that Vanessa is found or returned. Um, honestly, I'm not in full understanding of the safe haven law. Um, I don't know how exactly it works. There could be a there could be a chance, in my opinion, that this person knows they could drop Vanessa off, and maybe they want to, but there's security footage and things like that. Maybe they're worried they'll be caught on security footage, and even if they're not charged with abandonment, you could 
still potentially be found and charged with multiple other things in connection to Vanessa's disappearance and potentially Jose and the murder of Christine. Um, so maybe that's something that's scaring people away, whoever may have her. I have no clue, but what I do know is that authorities and Vanessa's family are not giving up. They are still actively searching for her. Um, if you're in the community, I'm sure you can follow the Facebook page or whatever you can to help them. I know they are very active. There's a lot of vigils. There's a lot of different fundraisers to support money for flyers. But at this point, you know, getting out this exposure is a huge deal in my opinion and could really benefit finding Vanessa. And one thing that I'm also excited to see if it makes any sort of difference at all is the discovery um, process for the trial for the murder of Christine. There is another huge chance that information will come out during that discovery phase of the trial and that could give some sort of answers. There's lots of different questioning and cross-examination that's going to happen and there might be information that slips about Vanessa in that. So this is a trial that I'm absolutely going to follow and I really want you guys to follow and please share this information about Vanessa because she's too young to understand what's going on. She's too young to speak for herself. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and go you guys thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to not only christine's story but vanessa's make sure to keep this out there post it on your instagram anywhere that you can she's got a missing persons flyer that you can post just to keep her name out in the public so people do not forget it's a very important time especially with this trial seeming to be ramping up so hopefully there are some answers that i can update you guys on soon but that is all i have for you guys today if you haven't already hit the subscribe button to become a part of the howland fam so we can hopefully bring them home together and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!